What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Molly from Molly World. And yes, I know I've been gone for about a week. I got my camera back and everything is fine. And we back on top, guys. So let's get right back into it. Today we're here to talk about One Piece opening 23, Act 3 of Wano. Now, we did the other one with Goldie versus Whitebeard. But this one is a little bit different. It's similar to the other one but there are that there are small things in this opening that has been changed and i want to do um a breakdown to it because it is very important these little things that they throw in there is so important to not even the future of one piece but to right now of one piece most times it's like the plot to the future but this right now is important to what's about to happen and one piece as we speak because they're getting ready to go I feel like they're getting ready to end off the Odin, and once they're done with Odin, they get right back into the action because the Odin whole storyline was like, it was filler, but it was great filler. It was filler to give you what happened in the past with Kaido and his crew, how they took over Wano, and how he left, how he came back, how he left again, how he came back, how he had his kids. So it's all important information also for the beginning. It's also important information to show people how important Odin was in the past and why Whitebeard, Kaido, Goldie, why all these people had connections to this one samurai from this country that really no one knows about but everybody kind of hear about. So that's the reason why this flashback and this filler s episodes was super important. And I, I pretty much enjoyed it, to be honest. I pretty much enjoyed it, the most of it. I love seeing young Kaido and seeing how he was like, how him and... Odin had like these great battles. I love seeing young queen, young king. Like those was like my favorite part of it, seeing them two in their younger forms. And it was really great, it was really great. But um, with that being said guys, let's get straight into this opening 23. Let's start breaking it down. Let's get straight into it. I just love the way they put the emphasis on the, the hockey now. There's not many times where I enjoy One Piece songs, to be honest. See, look at look at right there. Pause real quick. Pause real quick, guys. Pause real quick. Pause real quick, guys. My boy Marco the Phoenix is going to pull up and Wano. Like, he's going to pull up and Wano. It's been said, it's been talked about, about him pulling up and Wano. And now it's time for him to pull up and Wano. It's going to be great. Like, Marco the Phoenix, I've said for many, many years, Marco is one of the strongest One Piece characters out there. I mean, he was the right-hand man, the first commander to the strongest pirate in all of the world. I definitely believe he's stronger than Queen, King, Katakuri. I believe he's the strongest of all the commanders and all the pirate crews. I mean, his devil fruit is beyond OP. Like, he can revive and revive and revive and heal almost any wound he has. Marco was very OP even when he was a young dude. I mean, obviously, that boy Rayleigh, he stopped him with, with one finger. I mean, that was disrespect to that boy. But let's keep going. Oh, no. Ho, whoa, whoa. Pause again, guys. These dudes right here... Everybody know X Drake right there. These people right here are like so cool. Every single one of them have their own individual coolness in my opinion. So these six pirates right here are Kaido's top pirates. Besides his headliners, which is Queen, King, and Jack. These are his headliners. These pirates here, each one of them have a mythical zone devil fruit. Every single one of them turn into a animal monster, dinosaur, whatever you want to say, they all turn into something that's a mythical creature. Now, not only do all of them turn into a mythical creature, all six of them are pirate captains from their own pirate crew. So Kaido, everyone know Kaido, he like taking strong pirates and making them join his crew. So every single one of them are captains. They're all captains. This is why he won't kid. This is why he took Hawkins. This is why he took Scratchy Apu. This is why he won't Luffy. He wants strong pirates on his crew. And you will be like, why do he have six powerful 
pirate captains working for him. Because that's what Kaido do. See, you guys are going to find out that he gives them options or chances to become, to move higher up in his crew. And this arc that's coming up, he tells them, tells them that if they can catch this, this one person, he'll let them have a one-on-one -on -one fight with one of his all-stars. His all-stars is his top three. And if they beat them, they can take their spot, which they can get closer to fighting Kaido because they all, every one of them have their own goal. And that's the thing about being a pirate. You gotta have your own goal in the end. And that's what Kaido is. Kaido wants the strongest crew with the strongest people to take down the world. That's what he wants. And these six people here are some of the strongest new pirates of this era that we haven't talked about yet but they're part of the new generation and D6 pirates are very, very powerful and they're working for Kaido because they want to beat Kaido. You know, that's the whole thing about it. And uh, I'm not going to hold you guys here for too long. Let's get back into it. Oh my God. Why are they doing, why are they doing this? Why are they doing? <laughs> I told you guys this was important. Spoiler alert right here because this is a breakdown. That is Kaido's daughter right there, guys. That is Kaido's daughter. That girl right there is his daughter. She comes off early in and she says that she's Odin. But she's not. She's not a dude. She's not Odin. She's Kaido's daughter, guys. That is his daughter. Yes, that is his daughter. And she is very, very, very powerful. Just to let you guys know. Like, very powerful. Let's get back into it. Yeah, that boy Tarek, he don't want to bump no more. <laughs> Yo, Ichi, he, I just can't stand this dude, bro. I can't wait till he die. Oh my, whoa, I didn't see that there. The little black, you guys in the little black floating goop thing? That is probably, <clears throat> that is probably the reason why Kaido got such a big up on Odin in the past. I'm not gonna give you guys a spoiler on that. But that little black oop goop thing is crazy important. If you read the manga, then you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read the manga, you guys, when you guys find out what that is, you guys are going to be so pissed. I mean, that was planted 20 years ago. It's just insane. Insane. Let's get back into it. Like, I just love the way they animated Kaido's dragon. Big Mom, you tripping right there? Hey, don't sleep on Big Mom. I've been saying people, I've been telling people for years, don't sleep on Big Mom. And now look how powerful she is. Queen, King. I can't wait to Sanji put on his suit. You know, you know, guys, I don't think really people pay attention to that final scene right there when Luffy's coming down. And I want to break that part down for you guys. People haven't really paid attention to that whole scene. And a lot of people, I see a lot of people talk about, oh, why is there so many colors in it now? Why is there so many, like, kind of making it seem like they're, like, have another power besides Haki. Well, when you unlock Haki... You know, you're a step closer to unlocking the next form of Haki. And then once you conqueror, once you unlock Harden Haki and all those other things, then you unlock something called Conqueror's Haki. If you're strong enough and you have your will strong enough, you unlock something called Conqueror's Haki. There's not many characters in this world or in One Piece that has Conqueror's Haki. There's a very, very small handful of people that have it. Guys like Rayleigh, of course, all pirate captains like... Whitebeard had it, Kaido has it, Big Mom has it, um, uh, most likely Blackbeard has it, uh, um, uh, Goldie Roger had it, you know, guys like that, they have it, Doflamingo, we seen he had it, even though he's locked up right now, Katakuri, we seen that he had it, and now we know that Luffy has it, and we also know that Captain Kidd he has it too, so out of all the supernovas that's come into the world, we only see that two have it. Luffy and Kid. Luffy's trained for it, but Kid hasn't trained for it. Kaido said, just like Luffy, 
kid has it, which is very annoying. Because when someone has Conqueror's high key, their will is so strong that they would never bend the knee to anybody. And that's why he had a hard time trying to turn kid to his slave. Apu was easy. Hawkins was easy. They were just like, yeah, Kyle, let's do it. I don't want to bump you. I don't want to fight, bro. So it was easy for him to turn them against on his side. When you have Congress Haki, it's so hard to bend that person's will because in order to have Congress Haki, you need a strong will. Now, Congress Haki, from what people think they know, it can knock people out by just activating it. Well, you're wrong. It can do more than that. You can use Congress Haki as an attack and as a defense. The reason why Kaido cannot be defeated is because he uses, he coat himself in Congress Haki. So, it's not about hardening your skin where you get the black haki. It's more about coating your body with that energy form of haki, which is conquerors haki around your body. You can use for attack and defense. And that is the reason why Luffy cannot defeat Big Mom or Kaido. If you go back and you see when they were at Big Mom place, he attacked Big Mom and literally did no damage to her because, yo, you don't have conquerors haki. And you, even if you do, you don't know how to use it properly. I and mean, then you go into Kaido where he gave Kaido everything he had and he couldn't defeat Kaido because he has Conqueror's Haki, but he don't know how to use it. Now in the manga, right now where we're talking about, Luffy knows how to use Conqueror's Haki. He knows how to coat himself in it. And Kaido gave him props. He said, you know what? I talk bad about you. I talk smack about you, but I see you know how to use Conqueror's Haki or at least you think you know how to use Conqueror's Haki the proper way. And that's the only way to hurt Kaido because his skin and his scales are so powerful and is so strong that they are almost unbreakable. Only some people like Whitebeard, Kaido, Goldie were able to actually injure him. Even Odin. Only people like that were actually people able to injure him because they were such skilled fighters and they mastered Haki and Conqueror's Haki too. But with that being said, guys, that's a breakdown of Opening 23 Act 3 of Wano. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There's so many Easter eggs. There's so many spoilers and all that extra stuff in this opening. So if you guys watch this and you guys got spoiled, my bad. I'm sorry. I told you guys it was a breakdown. It wasn't a reaction. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a like. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know if you've seen the manga. And uh, what you guys like. If you guys haven't seen the manga, let me know if you hype and prepared and ready for this that's going to come to the anime. Guys, always and never forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell up top for you get the notifications every single time I drop a video. Until next time, guys. I bet you a goodbye.